Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today we're going to use the new trenching bucket on my backhoe to dig some drain lines around the driveway. As a homeowner, you're always dealing with water where you don't want it. And I've been working for a little while now on solving the drainage issue with my driveway, and I think we're about there. So if you look at the front of the house, we've got downspouts over here and over here. And the water off of that downspout dumps on the driveway, the paved section, and runs out and kind of puddles up down here. And then it washes across the driveway about where I'm standing. Second downspout comes down over here and then washes right behind where the backhoe is. And a lot of times there'll be standing water right there. And if you look here, I just recently regraded this and there's already potholes here and that's because the other downspout up there and all the water off this hill come across and come down that side of the driveway and we used to have a river coming down the other side of the driveway but i put a drain up at the top of the driveway and all the water that was hitting there and coming down the other side it's now hitting that drain and washing out so this side of the driveway stays dry now but we need to do the same thing on the other side. So the plan is I have catch basins. I'm going to put a catch basin right over at this corner at the edge of the concrete where water puddles and then run that straight across in front of the concrete on the driveway. Then I'm going to put a catch basin in the second spot where it collects and dig a trench over and connect those two trenches around this corner here and run it out this way. So there's two spots. I'm also going to dig a trench that comes all the way down this side of the driveway and ties in right there. So I'm going to have actually three different drain lines. I've got all my pipe here. I've got, got it all planned out. Now it's time to get to work. First thing I got to do is put the trenching bucket on. My original plan was that as I dug this trench, I was going to sort the top layer, which would be rock, from the clay. But I kind of decided for this narrow little area, it wasn't worth it to do that. And it was kind of a rock clay mixture anyway. So everything that I pulled out of here is just going to be added to my fill material that I'm using down at the back corner of the property. This morning I picked up four tons of three quarter inch clean rock that I'm going to use to fill this back in so that hopefully water really penetrates down through that into the drain pipe. As 
As soon as I started digging, the trench immediately started filling up with water, which at first might seem like an annoyance, but honestly, it works in your favor a little bit because water self-levels and it lets me see where my high points are and helps me make sure that as I dig, I keep getting a little bit lower and lower without having to get a level out. I have dug hundreds, if not over a thousand feet of trench with this little backhoe. And all of the rest of the trenching I've done was with the 12-inch bucket. And there are several reasons that this works better. The first is that digging a trench two to three times as wide as you need it to be just makes a big mess because whatever you pull out of the hole has to be filled back in. The backhoe can also dig easier with a more narrow bucket because it just takes less force because you're pulling up a smaller scoop of dirt. On a lot of the trenches I've dug, I put the spoils right next to the hole and that's a mistake as far as I can see because now, if I need to go back in and clean up the bottom of the trench, I can drive back over this ditch and not have to worry about the tractor leaning too hard to one side. So, as I was going, I was setting everything further away, and then I was also using the bucket to push everything sideways and get a nice straight pile that I can come back and scoop up when I'm done. So I was about to scoop up all this that I dug out and haul it off and realize that might not be the best idea. Right now, I'm not sure if I have enough rock, clean rock, to fill in over the top of this. And if I can't completely fill this in today, because the rock yards are already closing, if I can't fill this in today, I'm going to leave that pile there just so no one forgets that I've got a trench here and drives off in it. So. Next thing I need to do is get a little trenching shovel and clean out what little bit of dirt is obstructing the water from running down to the low end. Then once I've got this cleaned out, I'm going to set my pipe in, start filling rock over it. Once rock is filled over this, then I'll know exactly how far that rock's going to go and how many loads it's going to take to finish all this out. All right, so I worked out with the hoe a little bit and I've, a rock just fell back in. I'll have to pick that out, but I'm getting a steady flow that's pretty smooth coming down this, but it drops more than it needed to. I probably didn't need to get this deep at this end, but water is definitely gonna flow down that. Most of you are probably familiar with these. I snap the cap in the back because nothing's going in the back. And then your pipe snaps into this in the front. It's got a little catch in there that you can pull out leaves occasionally with it. And then I already knew I wasn't going to be able to finish this today. I'm going to have to just do this section, leave the pipe sticking out of the ground, and then finish it later. But now I really have no choice because I've got two different types of pipe here. This is the pipe that I want to use 
know if you can even see it there, but it's got slits all around it. And this is the pipe that's actually designed to be used with those catch basins because they're supposed to catch water and then this is a solid pipe that transports the water. But I don't only want to catch water down there. I want to catch water the whole length of the driveway. So I'm using the perforated pipe with the catch basin even though that's not the design. But I thought everything I had was perforated and it's not. So I can only use up my perforated pipe and then I'll be out. Need to put some kind of weight on this end of the pipe, hold it in place. Now the way that is right now, my grate is probably four inches below grade, and I want to bring it up about even with the concrete. It's right against the wall, so you know it shouldn't get run over or damaged or anything. Just need to bring it up a little bit. I'm sure I'm going to get some comments about the decision not to use geotextile fabric underneath the drain pipe on this project. And opinions vary on how important or effective it is on these type of drains to put that fabric at the bottom. I've done several of these without using the fabric and I've done several with the fabric and it seems like they all continue to drain just fine. I've watched videos from some drain experts who say they always use it and I've also watched videos from some guys that I really trust who say they never use it so I guess opinions vary <laughs> I think that turned out pretty good. I've got about 30 minutes to go get cleaned up and leave for my son's baseball game. But I got two thirds of the length of this buried. I ran out of corrugated pipe. And right where this rock ends is where the end of my pipe is. So once I dig the rest of this trench, the water will run down and I can bring that on down here, tee into my other lines. Should work out good.
In summary though, I started off to talk about the trenching bucket. Thought it did a great job. It was an improvement over digging with a regular bucket. So it made less of a mess, easier cleanup. I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. I'll put links over here to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.